Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy Saturday. Welcome to another weekly episode of the Romero Threads Embroidery School, which happens every weekend, Saturday at 8 a.m. Central. All right. So it looks like we are good to go here. Somebody give me a thumbs up. Let me know if we're looking good. All right. We have a jam packed day today. Okay. Today is one of the most important. A uh, skill that us embroiders we have to have. Okay, so as soon as I get a thumbs up, uh, sounds like I'm good. Let me see if I sound good. Yep, I sound good on the on the iPad here. All right, so today one of the most important skills. Okay, us as embroiders we have to have. Okay, even though even though you send out all your artwork to a digitizer, okay? Uh, being able to do your own text, okay, is, is something that is probably not the smartest thing to do, or it's probably not the smartest thing to send out to a digitizer, okay? For, for example, okay, thank you for the thumbs up. Got everybody right here, all right? Uh, so let me rewind a little bit. Okay, so digitizing your own text, okay? The reason why it's so important, even though you send out your, your artwork to a digitizer, okay? Because there are gonna be times where it's, uh, you're gonna have kind of like an organization and they want customization on each product, okay? For example, names, right? Names is always a big thing. It's always a big add-on item on top of the project that you're doing. So it wouldn't make sense to send out every name to a digitizer, okay? First of all, it'll be real costly and it's just un very unnecessary uh, once you learn how to digitize text, okay? So very, very important topic today is digitizing text. And um, my goal for today, okay, for today's class is to go over each alphabet, okay? Because the way I see it, believe it or not, each, each letter in the alphabet, okay, I feel that it has its own personality, okay? Sometimes it wants to do things different than other letters, okay? So some letters, we have to treat it different than certain letters, okay? I don't know if that makes sense, but sometimes, okay, which we'll talk about individually, okay? Sometimes we have to do certain items or certain uh, things to our to our designs to kind of uh, make up for certain uh, things on our text, okay? So I'll kind of talk about it once we get there, okay? But, uh, Good thing, one thing about um, text, okay, one thing about text is that once you learn how to do text, a lot of the other part of digitizing, okay, now starts to make sense, okay? So now we could start adding the more, uh, the more advanced type stuff, okay? But step number one is always learning text, okay? And this here, today's uh, episode, so this is our, four, our fourth week, we've been hitting hard, on text, on logos, okay? We've been going hard. And what I want is for today to build that strong foundation. So next week, okay, next week, it's gonna set us up for our topic for next week, okay? And just a preview for next week, we're gonna be designing patches, okay? Patches with text, all right? So that way we get all the information here and with whatever we learn today, we can apply it to next week when we start getting into the more advanced stuff, such as patches. All right. So, all right. Looks like the the chat. Uh, we got a lot of people coming in. All right. Welcome. Good morning. We are going to uh, we are going to start first thing with the digitizing part. So, hold on. All right. Let's see. All right. Cool. All right, so let me see if I could minimize this a little. Okay, so before we even start our letters, okay, digitizing letters, I just want to go over some quick uh, fundamental type stuff. Now, one thing about this class, I want to keep it very uh, software basic, okay? I'm not going to use any of the more advanced tools uh, that I have available here, okay? Uh, I'm gonna use the most common tools that every that everybody should have. Okay, as long as you're at least at a at a medium 
because uh, all software, they have the most basic, they have the medium, and they, they have the advanced stuff, okay? Uh, a lot of this stuff, as long as you have the medium type stuff of any software, okay, it should, it should uh, easily apply to whatever software you have, all right? So uh, anytime you have any questions today, okay, make sure you put a Q before it. Just so when I start scrolling later today, uh, later in the show, okay, I could catch your question real quick. All right. Um, so first thing that I want to do today, as you can see, I just created some random shapes. Okay, very common random shapes that uh, that you'll see that you'll typically see in digitizing. Okay, so what I want to do, I just want to go over some of my uh, some of the vocabulary and language that I'll be using today. All right, so I'll show it first as an example before we get into the, the alphabet, digitizing alphabet portion. All right, so, um, so first thing, always you insert your artwork, right? Uh, here, we're looking, remember uh, M, if you push M on your keyboard, uh, it should have the measurement tool, okay? If, if it's not M on your, on your program, just find out what is your hotkey, okay? 5.96, all right? So, you're going to see me using the, the measurement tool a lot. So if you see me pull out the uh, the ruler, it just means that I push the letter M and I could see how big my uh, design is. All right, 38.71 millimeters. All right, and then when I hold control here, when I'm holding control, that just means that I'm locking in uh, perfect angles. All right, so I go from 15 degree angle, zero degree, and I could go to 40, uh, 30 degree, all right? So increments of 15, all right? So let's go ahead and usually this one, column A stitch, everybody has a column A stitch, all right? So this one here, the rectangle, very common, especially for letters. You could just dim. It's always smart to dim your artwork and of course to lock it. So you could push letter T, uh, K, uh, and then you could lock or unlock. All right, so I just have my drawing locked right here. All right, um, right now I am just going to use my column, okay? This is the one that I'm really gonna use while we're digitizing letters, all right? So real quick, I just click once, all right? Anytime you click, that's where uh, you're, you're inserting a point where your needle is gonna go in, okay? And then you push control, it'll lock that zero degree here, okay? So now I'm locked in with my zero degree. So that'll guarantee that you have a straight stitch right here. Okay, so it's looking 5.975. All right, I click there. That's my first stitch. And then I bring it all the way to where I want it to end. I hold control. That gives me a straight line also. Okay, so very important to learn your hotkeys because it'll help you move faster. And then here I'm on the other side. So all I did was create a box. Okay, and I'm holding control to keep this line perfectly lined up. All right, once you got that, you push enter. Okay, uh, let's see. All right, so you're gonna see me use uh, those hotkeys a lot. All right, but that's that's just the way. And then if you wanna verify your angle, okay, you go to your reshape, okay. I know this is a lot of uh, review for a lot of people, but just in case um, some people uh, are not aware of some of these uh, common keys, okay. So you could always change your angles here, stitch angles. Okay, here my angles are perfectly lined up. All right, so I'm good. Okay, so that one's, uh, of course, the basic one. Let's talk about this heart, okay? Especially uh, Valentine's coming up. Uh, you're gonna see a lot of heart designs, okay? Um, here on the left, you could see digitized closed shapes. All right, so that just means I'm gonna design something and it's gonna close in shape, all right? Um, here, this corner here, it, it, it looks like a corner, okay? When I say we are going to, uh, we're gonna do a sharp turn, this is what I'm talking about, all right? So you're going one way, and then all of a sudden we're gonna pivot here, okay? So here, you always want a uh, square or a left click, okay? I usually call it a uh, straight, I'm going straight, straight, okay? Here, as I'm going curving, have you see this curve go? All right, if I'm clicking on a curve, I'll just call out curve, 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 curve. And then here, uh, you, you could still say this is curve. It looks like it's getting a little straight. 
okay, uh, curve here. And then here, notice that we pivot, okay? We're gonna go from one end and make a sharp turn, okay? So I'm either gonna call out pivot or I'm gonna say straight, okay? Meaning I'm gonna turn here. And then I go back to my curves, all right? And then all the way through is just nothing but curves, all right? And then um, finally enter, okay? Entry point, all right? Let me just select this as a outline, okay? So here goes our outline, perfectly shaped outline, okay? Uh, you could just track it. And uh, of course here, if you don't get perfect trace here, you can always press the reshape tool, okay? So let's see here, H, and then you could add a node, okay? So you just click on that line, put a circle right there, all right, just to refine. All right, now we have a perfect heart right there, okay? And then once you have this outline, you could either change, you could change the type of stitch that you want, okay? So let's say you're doing an applique and you wanna make a heart applique, okay? This could be your uh, your run stitch, all right? And then you could use this stitch here for every other stitch, okay? So for example, you could duplicate it and then create a uh, zigzag stitch. Okay, zigzag, all right, or a sand stitch, okay? You would just adjust the size of it, okay? All right, so that's just what, what I'm kind of showing you right now is just tracing, all right? Uh, I just want to show you tracing. Sometimes you get some of these uh, odd shot, odd shape top type of uh, designs, okay? Same thing, if you're going straight, okay? If you're going straight, you just create straight lines, right? And then the thing is here, okay? Right here, we're gonna pivot. Okay, now we're going curve. So you wanna make the curve uh, trace. For Wilcom, it's, it's just a right click, all right? It's just a right click. And then here, I'm gonna pivot, okay? I'm gonna go from curve to, to straight line. So here, I left click, all right? And then go, I'm um, continue being straight here, straight. And then I just close it by entering, all right? And then uh, I could also make it a, uh... okay? So when I'm talking about uh, tracing, that's what I'm talking about, okay? Let's just, let's look at this one here, okay? This one's like a real curvy one, okay? Um, this is just a uh, introduction before we get into the, into the digitizing the letters, all right? I just wanna go over some common, uh, things that I'm gonna be doing. Okay, here, uh, we could just trace it through the middle, all right? We could just start here, all right? Since, we're, since we are as a curve, you could start right-clicking from here, all right? And what you wanna see is where, at what point do you dip, okay? So it looks like we dip right here, and then you could add curves here. Of course, we wanna, we wanna have the least amount of uh, clicks, all right, but sometimes if you're unsure, just click on it, all right, and then you're just following this path. So since these are all curves, we're just right-clicking here, okay? I think some programs, they use the control. Uh, you have to push control to do the curve, okay? So whatever your, uh, your software does the curves, all right? But here, we're just curving. We don't have any sharp turns, so we're not, left clicking all right and remember if 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 you don't get uh, a click perfectly made you could always go back and fix it up all right and then the last one all right so then you look at our uh our stitch it looks pretty pretty good here okay so once you get a hang of it i would recommend when you're learning how to trace okay just get random shapes and practice them over and over and over and over. Okay, and then we could turn this. Once you got this shape, you could you could adjust it. You could turn it into a sand stitch. Okay. All right. So you could do a lot of things. And then of course, if there's something that you wanna that you wanna uh, fix up a little, just push the reshape. Okay. And then you could move these nodes. All right. If you wanna move nodes around. Okay. Of course, this is a, an excessive. Uh, change just to kind of highlight that you can make changes.
All right. So before we get into uh, digitizing the alphabet, all right, because that is the goal for today. OK, does anybody have any questions about this part so far? All right. So let me check out the chat. Um, all right. Good morning. We got. Uh, let's see. Good morning from North Central Minnesota. Good morning, Barb. Uh, snow coming in later today. Minus six degrees. Yes. It's crazy. Minus six. And then you add the wind chill. It's always crazy. All right. Uh, good morning, Craig. All right. I'm pretty sure it's cold over in Utah. All right. So we got a lot of people in the house today. All right. Uh, remember, if you have any uh, questions or anything, just put a Q right before it and then we'll see if we get into any uh, if we get into the questions um, as as the show goes on. All right. Um, we got Legene Dennis. Good morning from Wisconsin. All right. So you're just kind of north of where I'm at. I love these Saturday morning class. I'm learning so much. Thank you. All right. That is the goal. Every Saturday, we start uh, our Saturday like that. All right. We got we got my brother here, straight, live, and direct from 818 Vine Eyes, California. All right. So shout out to everybody from California. Okay. Also, big shout out to everybody that's in um, Long Beach at the ISS convention. Okay. Uh, by the looks of it, all right, it, it looks like a lot of the big companies are there. All right. So if you got any information or if you're there already, if you already if you already went through the through the convention already and have anything you want to any information that you learned or anything. All right. You could always uh, share it here on the chat also. All right. All right. Um, let's see. All right. T-Town shirts. Uh, maybe go over the zigzag shape, the one that looks like the W. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we actually going to we'll talk about it when we get to the W. All right. Because we're going to digitize all the letters. All right. Uh, yeah. Good reminder right here. Please remember to give a thumbs like a thumbs up. All right. Appreciate that, Barb. All right. So let's get into the main uh, part of the show. OK. Um, so one thing we're going to we're going to go ahead. We're going to digitize the letters, uh, the alphabet. OK. Uh, very good practice. All right. This this font here, this is just uh, regular Arial. OK. So everybody has Arial. If you have a laptop, Microsoft, it's a Microsoft font, okay? Um, you should be able to digitize this. But once you get this part, okay, this is kind of like very uh, basic, uh, but one of the most popular fonts, okay? Pretty much if you can do this block font, okay, you can adjust and do any font, especially any block, okay? And then you take it to the next level and now you start uh, digitizing the more advanced type fonts, okay? Um, so. Of course, we're going to digitize all these letters real quick. Also, I want to talk about small lettering, OK, because during the week I receive a ton, a ton of questions regarding text. OK, and a, one of the main questions that we saw is uh, small text. OK, so we'll we'll talk about small text. I got the small text right here uh, lined up. OK. All right, so uh, let's start with digitizing and talking about our letters, okay? Uh, this one here, this is uh, very, this is kind of like the equivalent to the block two font. So everybody has the block two, okay? Anytime we do hats, the back of hats, uh, we always using block two font. So if you see your block two, this is your block two. Let me see. Um, yeah, you could see here, special uh, block two font. OK, one of the most popular, uh, one of the most popular fonts that you'll ever use. OK, especially with hats. Uh, if you're doing any um, certain team team hats, uh, organization hats, this would be my recommendation to always start with. OK, I still use the block two font. All right. Unless somebody has a specific font they want to go with. OK, but if they do not want to get a uh, charge of digitizing fee with our shop, we usually just use block two. OK. All right. So. Uh, so we got the Arial font. So here, this is how it looks when it's not when it's not dimmed. So let me undim it. OK, so uh, what I always recommend. 
let me click out of this right here. What I would recommend is always lock, okay? Lock your artwork, okay? So K, lock your artwork, and then dim it, all right? That way, it's not gonna move, all right? It's locked in right here, all right? All right, so we zoom in, and let's kind of talk about some of our lettering. All right, let's talk about some of our lettering right here. Uh, let's give some characteristics to some of these letters right here, okay? For example, what would you say is the most easiest letter right here, okay? Um, if you're looking at all the letters, which would probably require the, le the least amount of clicks, okay? So if you look at here, Okay, this L, of course, right? The L is the most basic letter, okay? And then from the L, how many letters can you construct with this letter L, right? Or who, how, who, which letter uses this letter L, right? So we can see like the P uses part of it, okay? This J kind of, and then it curves in, this K, okay? So once you have this, well, it's not the L, it's the I. Sorry about that. Okay, but actually it's both L and I, okay? So as you can see, there's a lot of similar shapes that are happening, okay? So pretty much if you can digitize this one, okay? You're already halfway there because pretty much all the shapes have similar ones, okay? Same thing with this B, okay? How many lowercase b's can you create with other shapes? All right, so if you look at this letter B here, notice this B, if you reflect it, it looks like the Q, okay? If you just, if you were just to flip it over, it looks like the Q. And then if you mirror the Q, now it looks like the P, all right? And then if you flip this P, now it looks like the D, all right? So a lot of these letters, once you get and you understand how to digitize, I would say 20% of these letters, okay? They all match with every, uh, other letters, similar letters, okay? So once you get the hang of one letter, you pretty much got like four or five other letters, okay? So a lot of the stuff that we do with text, a lot of it is repetition, okay? Doing it over and over and over. It's just a matter of doing it um, as efficient, quickly as possible. Okay, now there's certain letters that want to act a little different. Okay, there's certain letters that in on your screen, they're going to look perfectly fine. But when you stitch them out, okay, they're not always the, the most prettiest thing to look at. Okay, so there's sometimes that we're going to have to uh, overcompensate certain designs. Okay, and we'll talk about overcompensating, also known as pull comp. Okay, pull comp, uh, push pull. Okay, always uh, a topic that is kind of hard to understand because you can't see that on the screen. Okay, you can't, you can't, a lot of times you can't anticipate what's about to happen unless you've already seen it before. All right, so we'll talk about some of this uh, uh, common pull comp. Also underlay, always important underlay, okay? Because I think the number one reason why somebody's text looks all choppy, why it looks like just, you know, like uh, it's not really nicely cleaned is because the underlay, all right? Sometimes I think the biggest problem is underlay, too much underlay, and now you have underlay that's spilling out, okay? Once you have underlay that's spilling out, it's kind of hard to, to make any adjustments to fix it, all right? So let's go ahead, let's start digitizing our letters, okay? So uh, what I wanna do, uh, actually, I could just go one by one, okay? What I was gonna do is just create one and, and start uh, forming other ones with that with that one. But we could go ahead and we could start digitizing. Uh, before I start, does anybody have any questions so far on our uh, uh, introduction portion of it? All right. All right, Craig, real quick. Can you give dates and info on upcoming conferences? Uh, yeah, I gotta I gotta check them out online and see if there's any of them coming up. But that that's the big one, the Long Beach ISS. That's like the real big one. And then they have one in Fort Worth later. And then there's a bunch of smaller ones. All right, Robin, 
Uh, is it easier to digitize using uh, millimeter versus inches? Uh, yeah, very good question. Uh, when you're checking big design, like the total size of the design, then it's it's good practice to use inches. But once you get into the details, okay, once you get into the details, now you want to uh, get into the millimeters, okay? Once you're on a thread level, okay? Total design level, you want to, for example, here, if I want to measure my total distance from left to right, okay? I would want to use inches just to see. Um, so if I click here and I check this total, 5.3, uh, I kind of know which hoop I'm going to use to digitize, uh, to embroider all these letters. Okay. But once we get into this close, like we're this zoomed in, then it wouldn't make sense to be in inches. Okay. Uh, right here, once you get this close, now you adjust to millimeters. All right. Very good question there. All right, let me see. All right, uh, can you please, uh, Linda, can you please tell me what setting is causing a tie off at the start of every design? Oh yes, definitely go over that. Every coma All right, very good, uh, very good question. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that right now when we when we get into that part right now. All right, all right, let's start digitizing. Okay. Let's go with the fun part, right? It's always fun to digitize. So the A, actually I have a breakdown here, okay? So this is block, this is the one that's block two, okay? Notice that, and there's different letters. You could digitize letters differently, okay? But for the most part, okay, uh, our letters, okay? They're broken, they're broken down into pieces, all right? So here I could just, I could just break apart and then break apart again. Just keep on breaking it apart until you break it down to this lowest common denominator. Okay, so here, right? So when you're looking at letters, we're just looking at shapes that are combined, all right? So when we're digitizing, you're just creating uh, certain objects and combining them, and then they look like the letter A, all right? So kind of keep that in mind, all right, when we're digitizing. All right, and this one, they have a uh, top part here that combines these two here, all right? So it has a cap on top, and then it has a bridge here, okay? Notice that it has a bridge to connect the two, and it, and it has, um, it goes past the object, okay? Just so it could kind of get in there so you don't see any gaps, all right? So let's begin our... This one here, I'm gonna make a little different than the block one, okay? Like I said, there's different ways to uh, to digitize um, letters. I'm actually gonna use the column B, okay? When, uh, when I'm doing this column A, I'll tell you what this column B uh, stitch does, okay? What you do is you're uh, you're stitching the first side of this of this leg, all right? Enter. Now I'm doing the second side, and I like to digitize my A's like this, okay? So I'll show you real quick. Right now I'm digitizing the second side, all right? If you have this feature, very useful. All right, so what I did, I have my stitches coming in from left to right. And when it gets to this top part, it'll open up, okay, to do the top part. So I'm doing this, this whole part, I'm doing it in one object. Okay, so now I do the second leg. I could just use a regular column stitch for the second leg. All right, and then I'm just connect. I'm just tracing. Okay, I'm not doing anything too uh, over the top right now. All right, make it same color, and then okay, and then you could go your hotkeys, the hotkey from here to go from true true view to stitches. Okay, so I'm always going back and forth just to make sure that I got the good look right here. All right, and then here, let's do our bridge. Okay, we could just, you kind of go out a little. Come in, tab it. All right. All right, now let's check it out. All right, it's looking real good here. Now, this is where uh, for this letter A, what I like to do, I like to stitch it, instead of it stitching one object at a time, 
I combine them all together. So, you know, I'm a big fan of the brand branching tool. All right, so I push I, I for branching, or you can come up here. It's somewhere up here. All right, you can find a branching tool, all right? My hotkey is I, so I tell it where I want it to start. So on the bottom left, it's telling me, where do you want to start? Okay, so I, want, uh, I don't like to start right in the corners. I'll start it kind of like in the middle and I want to end where my next letter is going to be. All right, so I can actually, actually I want to go low. I'll start low here, okay? So we do a replay, okay? Actually, hold on, let me hide. I gotta hide the, the vector in the back. Oh. Yeah, so if you wanna replay. Oh, right here. All right, let's replay this real quick. And, bam, okay. So it has, uh, so you can see there, it has the center run and the zigzag underlay. Uh, I'm going to keep it very basic right now. I'm just going to do a um, a single center line uh, underlay. Okay, so let's show vector. All right, let's talk about underlays, all right? Let's talk about underlays. So here, I can select all my, uh, my whole A and... So underlay is the one that I say that it's uh, make or break on a lot of uh, digitizing, okay? So you can always have your first underlay, your second one, okay? Uh, what you, it, underlay depends on the size of your, of your, of your text. Okay, so here we're, we're pretty good, all right? We're like at 13.9. Uh, if you're looking at inches, I think a sweet spot for text, especially for hats, is 0.5 inches all right so half an inch that looks perfect for hats all right anywhere between i would say uh 0.4 to 0.6 okay perfect all right within that that category once you start dropping down now we start well, now we got to start talking about small text or larger type text okay so in inches um we are all right, about 0.5, all right, we're about 0.5. So that's, uh, I say that's kind of like a sweet spot for uh, for letters, okay? Um, I would just put a center run right now, all right? So now when you replay it, hold on. Let me take out the design, all right. So when you look at it, all right, if, so that underlay, so let me show you what just what happened. Hold on, I didn't take out the center underlay. All right, so let me show you real quick, replay, okay? Let's go a little slow. Okay, so right now, okay, this is why I like the branching, because what it did, it just put an underlay and it, it traced the letter A real quick, all right? That way, you know when that first stitch hits, it's gonna, it's gonna lock in the backing, okay? And now our letters, they're, they're less likely to to leave gaps, okay? Just because I put that underlay all together. All right, so very important just to have that together. All right, and now it's doing the replay. It's doing this part. And whatever I told it to start and wherever I told it to end, you have control of that, okay? So here, it's about to do the, the bridge here. It's gonna enter and then it's gonna, it's gonna end by doing the lag part. All right, so letter A, I would say letter A is one of the more, uh, I wouldn't say the more difficult one, but it's it, it's a very challenging one with certain fonts, okay? And I'll tell you why, because if, this is a common problem that people usually have. Let's break this apart. So let's take out the branching. Uh, sometimes this bridge, if you put it too high, Okay, if you keep it too high, there's certain fonts, right, that, that require for it to be high. What happens is you lose this gap, okay? This gap pretty much disappears, especially with small fonts, 
Okay, if you find yourself and and your uh, and your design has this gap very small, okay, usually the fix is just to bring this down a little lower, okay, a little lower. Like it won't be obvious to the to the regular person, okay. But if you lose that A, if you lose that little gap, now it doesn't look like an A, okay. So just a quick uh, FYI, right there. All right, let me bring it back. Let's bring out this uh, design back. Okay, uh, these first letters, okay, uh, this one, this A, that looks like that Amazon one that we digitized on day one. Okay, um, I'll kind of go quickly on this one. Okay, I think I, I did a full story on this one. All right, but really, we could just uh, trace this one straight forward. Okay, so even though my tracing is not perfect here, Okay, so as you're tracing, you notice that it's not perfect. All right, that's fine because we just go back, push the reshape. Okay, now you can fine, fine tune anything that doesn't look correct. All right, so here my design kind of goes straight. All right, bam, bam. All right, and remember, it doesn't have to be um, perfect, perfect, perfect. It just it has to be. Uh, close to perfect, all right, because you're not going to be looking at it like this, all right? You're not going to be zoomed in at 1,400%. If somebody zoomed in that close, then uh, they got to kind of take two steps back, all right? All right, let's just complete this one here. So here, we just want this portion to be slightly tucked in. So here, this is where your your all that tracing techniques that you've practiced on, all right, really comes handy here, all right, because all you're doing is tracing. Okay, so it looks good here, and then this is another one that we want to um, we want to uh, add a branching to it. So select all. So we're gonna select this whole item. I for branching. Okay, I got a cut here. I want to start here, so I could just start here, and I want to end here. Okay, all right. So that's how it looks there. All right. Uh, same thing here. Okay. So anytime you see a gap inside the letter, okay, one thing you want to uh, look out for is that that gap does not close on you. Okay, because two two reasons. Okay, first, you might start losing. You might start losing the look of the text. And second, uh, with so many needle penetrations, okay, it can actually make a hole now. Okay, if you have your needles too close where you can't even see your hole of your of your text. All right. So kind of keep that in the back of your brain when you're doing um, small text. Okay. Usually a small text type issue. All right. All right. Let's go over this B. Okay. Uh, B here. I like to do the B in one loop, okay? One loop around, okay? So start here, okay? I'm gonna kind of give you a route of where we're going, all right? It's like a Super Mario Kart, like the, the track, right? You start here, you're gonna go this way, go down, go around and in, all right? So that's the plan, so we can actually start backwards, all right? So start starting from here, start right here, okay? So we're going straight all the way up to here. Now we're gonna make that curve. So now you wanna start adding your curves here, okay? You wanna be as close as possible, but remember, if you don't get it 100% perfect, we can always go back and fine tune it, okay? Then here, once we get here, we're kind of straight now, okay? We're now straight. Get up here, straight, straight. We're just doing straights. All right, I like to put a straight here in the middle. And then here, let's see here. You can see where I'm going straight and then I kind of start curving off, all right? The B starts curving. You wanna click where you start curving. So about here, we started curving, okay? So we want a straight click, straight click here. And now we're curving, okay? So add a curve click, curve. Curve, 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 
curve. Bam. All right. All right, so there goes our B. And then you want to just take a quick look at it. Uh, looks good. OK. Remember, you could always uh, create your um, your tracing. Perfect, all right? But remember, it doesn't have to be. It has to be close to perfect, OK? Because you'll never get it to be perfect. All right, so that looks good. All right, bam, bam. OK, so uh, this B. All right, I like this B because this B, like I said before, we're going to turn this B into different letters. All right, so this one here, let's just take a quick look at it. This has a uh, straight line going down and then a curve. Okay, so let's create this first box here. All right, bam. And then remember, control keeps you a straight line. All right, so really, um, it's not the most, oh, hold on. So when I push control, it's not the most perfect accurate. Let me get a more accurate click here. All right, so here, zoom out, come here, and I'm pushing control. So I'm getting a straight line here. Okay. And then I click back, back down. Hold on. Let's try this again. Let's go metric. I have to go from left to right. All right. Control here, bam, bam, 2.3 meters, millimeters. Okay. I'm actually gonna go open it up a little. Okay. That part's the easy part. Now this one here, okay, this is one where you really gotta think about it, okay? Notice that our stitches are kind of coming in. All right, we gotta kind of create that angle. All right, so. Bam. You want to you wanna kind of blend in, OK? It's kind of like a, a freeway. Uh, when you're entering a freeway, you don't just want to enter it, you know, right away. You want to kind of merge in. And that's the same kind of mentality that you want to have with these, OK? So we're going to merge in here, OK, just so we fit in. Nice and clean. All right. So I think that was the perfect word there. OK, notice this input here. You don't just want to jump in and combine with this straight square or rectangle here. You want to merge in. All right. You want to smartly merge in. All right. So we're looking like this. And let's clean this up. OK, so we're going to branch it here. Select this. Let me see. Let's find branching right here. Uh, okay, branching here. I. So when I say I, this is what I'm talking about branching, right? So I, where do I want to start? I'm going to get cut here. So I want to start here. And I want to end. I'll do a cut here at the B. Okay. Now, this is where uh, a lot of your letters that look similar, OK? This is where you could start combining letters. So I'm going to push Control D, OK? So Control D, what I did was I duplicated this B here. And let's see who I want it to look like. I want it to match this letter D. All right, so I'm just going to reflect it. Everybody has, Everybody should have a reflector on your software, OK? So I got this shape that looks like a D. I'll hold down Control D. I mean, I'll, I'll hold down the Control button just so it could uh, slide perfectly to the right. All right. So here we can get like a, a lot of uh, with one design, we could probably get uh, four or five different designs. OK, so now here I have this D. I'm going to duplicate this D. OK. Now I can create which letter? Letter P. OK. Actually, I could do the Q. All right. So now I'm going to ref, uh, mirror it. OK. Let it go down a bit. And grab this Q. Let's see if it fits perfect. 
All right. So as you can see, all right, pretty much perfect. All right. Of course, you can always fine tune it better and better and better, but you're never going to get it perfect. All right. All right. Now, going to duplicate this one and create this P. Bam. All right. So I'm going to click it and control. All right now I have my P, bam, perfect. Okay, we'll just line it up so it could line up perfect. Okay, so it looks good. All right, let's see, bam, bam. All right, good. Let me see, is there any letter that looks like these? Uh, all right, the G looks like it, but this one is a little different. Uh, I can actually, yeah, I could use this. Okay, I could use the little, the, the circular, the circular part, all right? But it's cool. All right, so let's go with the C now, okay? If anybody has any questions, let me know, right? Uh, right now, very basic stuff when we're talking about lettering, okay? But this one here, the C, okay? This is one that gives people problems, all right? This C, okay? He's a little different. As you can see, okay? He looks a little different than all your other ones, okay? Um, and I'll tell you why. All right, but we always start here, right, at the ends. And then you're just doing curves, all right? Curve, 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 all right? Of course, you want the least amount of clicks possible, all right? But if you're uncertain, if you should put a click, just put a click, all right? All right, and then bam, bam, we got this. All right, let's talk about this letter C, okay? I'll tell you what to look out for. All right, first, let's let's create a uh, a baseline, okay? So here, this bottom part, if I put a line right here where they all kind of rest at, okay? This is my baseline here, okay? Notice that all my letters, they're resting here. And then here, kind of dips down below. Okay, notice the C goes down below a little. Okay, then create one up here. Hold on, yeah. So this line here, it, it'll help you, guide you as you're digitizing, all right? That way you know all your letters are uh, following the same height, okay? And then we make one here, the small letters. All right. This is your this distance here. This is your uh, X height line. OK, so you want your lowercase letters to kind of be matching here. Now, let me tell you something about C. OK, something about C. And this is the perfect time to talk about the push pull, push pull comp compensation. OK. Um, something that happens with push pull. Anytime you see these dots here, okay, these dots here, these are called your uh, your needle penetrations, okay. If you don't see that, you should your your software should have a um, should have a uh, one that says show needle points, okay. So if you don't have it, I like to see them because I like to see where does the needle drop in. So every time you see a dot like that, that means that the needle is going to go in, go out. OK, notice that here we have two. These are two threads. OK, when you're looking at it, you're looking at threads right here. OK, just imagine that needle, two people pulling. OK, so one person's pulling that side, another person's pulling that side. OK, so what you have to imagine is your 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 stitch at that point is getting pulled down. OK, it's getting pulled down. So in reality, you might think the needles is coming here, but when it stitches out, it gets pulled down here okay, to the actual line. So when you hear the word or the phrase uh, pull compensation. What you're doing, you're anticipating your stitches to pull in. OK, so whatever it's pulling in, you want to compensate for that pulling in. All right. So let me show you the example here. OK, so I have my uh, pool comp here. OK, my pool compensation is at 0.17. If I take this off, 
Okay. This is where my design is actually set up as. Okay. This is what my design is actually set up as. Once you put pull compensation, you're telling the you're telling the software, hey, I know my design should look like this, but let's go a little bit past my design because I know the stitches are gonna pull in. Okay, so instead of having it perfect like that, you wanna add and you wanna make the stitch go a little bit further. So it's 0 0.17. 0 0.17 is your uh, standard. Okay, what I would say, okay, this would kind of, uh, this might make your, uh, your text look a little bit more uh, bolder and stronger. What I would say is add more pull compensation. Even though 0.17 is your standard, I like to go either 0.25 or 3.0. Okay, so a little bit past that. Okay, here on the software it looks very obvious, but in reality you're just giving it a, a like an extra hair of thickness. Okay, so here pull compensation thirty. Okay, now one thing as you can see here, it's pulling in all different directions. What I like to do, I like to make the C a little bit uh longer okay so instead of it being the way it's digitized okay you can pull this top part okay and if you include shift now you now you're now you're uh increasing the top and bottom okay so when i pull it up i like to put it about 105 percent so you could see here it's labeled how much bigger of height i'm changing okay i'm just going 105 you could even go a little bit more all right but i like to go 105 uh something that i would recommend you to experiment okay especially letter c so when you're when you're looking at people and and, and their design doesn't look so great a lot of times you could you could just look at their letter c and you could see if they added that extra compensation all right that's just a little fyi to kind of see all right um the goal is to always have your letters matching this baseline okay when it's supposed to all right now let's stay on the topic of pool compensation okay here this letter b okay these nodes they're pulling in you can see that this letter is going to get a little thinner okay you can always if you see that it's getting too thin okay you can always make it a little thicker all right your design, especially in text, okay, especially in text, there's nobody here that's gonna come and check to see if you traced it perfect, okay? Sometimes you have to go and you have to make it unperfect, if that makes sense, okay? For example, here, I could make this a little wider because I know my stitches are gonna pull in, okay? Same thing here, okay? I can make this part a little wider. Okay, sometimes you have to anticipate. So the best thing to do is to digitize the entire alphabet. All right, depending on what on what your uh, garment is. Okay, stitch out the entire and see which letters want to act a little different. Okay, so this is a, a an example where the C it usually likes to act a little different. The goal is for it to be writing this baseline. Okay, and it's it's supposed to dip down below a little below the baseline. Okay, for example, here, this letter C is dipping down below the the baseline. Okay, so let's go real quick. Um, let's look at the letter D. Okay, so the letter D. Okay, you could see I'm just gonna do it all in one shot, right? So this is kind of like an an I mixed with an O. All right, so the same techniques that we use for uh, for the straights. Okay, so we go here. All right, and you're gonna once you start digitizing, once you start digitizing letters, you're gonna see which is your favorite letter. All right, because there's some letters that I really, really do not uh, that are not my favorite. Right. So, and then you're going to have your favorite letters, like letters that you love to do. And then 
you're going to find uh, certain fonts that you like. All right. So. All right. Bam. T. All right. This one's pretty much straightforward. This is another one where um, this bar here is going to pull in. So maybe H. Okay. Let's say you want to. Um, you want to make this whole side. You can select both these nodes, pull them back a little, okay, just to compensate this side. Okay, so when you're doing the pull compensation, sometimes you don't have to adjust this one too much because you don't have to. Sometimes you do. So let's say I do 25, but let's say you don't want to compensate for all the stitches. You just want certain stitches. You could select the nodes that you want to. Uh, compensate so for example here i added more pool compensation to the left side because i know my stitches are going to get thinner okay all right uh let's see we got a question here kenneth when is a good time to use the auto digitizing function okay um i would never use the auto digitizing okay i would never use the auto digitizing it's there i think the auto digitizing it's there as a feature all right, it's just a selling thing to kind of show uh, the the technology isn't there yet to auto digitize something. If you want to just say, hey, let me see what the uh, what the computer thinks should be the best route, you could do it, but you shouldn't actually use it because what happens is if you auto if you auto digitize it, it's gonna add a lot of nodes. Okay, that's the big thing. It adds nodes. All right, all right. Um, All right, let's continue here. All right, if you got any questions, let me know. Uh, let's go back to that one question about the locking in stitches. All right, let's look at this letter D, okay? Uh, when you're talking about uh, connectors, all right, tie in, tie off, okay? Tie in, tie off. Let's put this by itself. Okay, let's talk about tie in, tie off, okay? H, this is where I start. Let's say I start here in the middle. I like to start in the middle right here, and then I could end right here. All right, very important for tying tie off. Uh, if you want to remove your tie and tie off, you could just override it. You should be able to go into your software, go into the tie in and just turn it off. Okay, you should be able to turn it off. And then the same thing here, trim after. If you don't want to trim, if, you're, uh, if your software is setting a trim that you don't want, okay, you could turn it off. Now, if it's too long of a jump, it might just uh, put in a, a cut no matter what. All right, but tie-ins you should be able to uh, you should be able to take them off. So let's see here, tie-in, always tie-in. Hold on. Uh, D. Tie-in off, always tie-in. All right. So and then you could control your uh, tie-ins also, tie-ins, tie-offs, okay. So you have your choice of tie-offs. Uh, okay, this is another good one, okay. Uh, tie-in, tie-offs, a lot of times, if, especially small text, if you see that you have unnecessary uh, stitches, a lot of times it could be because of your tie-in, tie-offs, okay. I would recommend using this one, method two, okay, instead of method one, which kind of creates like a um, a small little box to tie in, okay? Especially uh, small text, all right? So if you see a little underlay kind of sticking out, it might be because of the tie-in tie-offs. And then I recommend you push H to start somewhere in the middle, okay, with your stitches. So that first stitch could hide under your under that thread. All right. All right, cool. All right, let's continue here. The show all. All right, good stuff here. All right, let's go. All right, uh, let's go into this E. E is, it looks very simple, okay? It looks, it is very simple, all right? But let me tell you what is a common problem with the letter E, all right? Notice, notice when somebody posts a uh, example of the letter E, I'll tell you what to look out for, okay? 
I'll tell you the type of stuff that you'll be seeing. All right. But they're all perfect corners. So uh, uh, tracing wise, very easy letter. Okay. Because you're just creating straight lines, nothing too complicated. Okay. And then you create this part guy here that's going to connect inside. Just go a little bit inside. And then I go at a little slight angle just so it's not perfectly in there. Okay. Okay. Really. This one seems like it's very straightforward, okay? Which it is, it is, okay? It is very straightforward. But what happens is we have nodes here, okay? So this, these nodes are pulling in, okay? So notice anytime you see a node and you see those stitches, think about it that they're pulling in, okay? So you're getting nodes pulling in here from the top and you're getting nodes here on the bottom. So what happens a lot, okay? And trust me, look at look at your uh, look at uh, other people's work or even your own work, okay? Because I, I I sometimes get it myself, and I'm also uh, constantly fixing this portion of the ease, okay? These two, the top part is pulling in, and that bottom part, this bottom part here, is pulling in. So what happens is your ease, this part, is getting real thin, okay? For some reason, these like to get real thin. So what I like to do, okay, select this, select uh, select this portion H, okay. So on this part, these two nodes here, I like to bring them down a bit, okay. Bring them down a tad bit, just extra, so it could give me a nice uh, stroke on the on the ease, okay. Same thing with this E, it's gonna pull down. So you want to follow this, the top part, okay? You want to follow this top portion, okay? You want to bring it above the line, okay? Now, it looks like we overshot our design, like it's going too high. But when it stitches, it's going to bring it back so it could follow this line, okay? So when you're talking about pull, uh, push, pull, Okay, same thing here, okay? Whatever happens on top here, it's gonna pull this design down, right? But what happens is this stitch here is gonna push to the right. So it looks like it's gonna stitch like this, but in reality, our stitches, they're pulling in, okay? So think of, uh, think of it when you're uh, pushing your toothpaste, right? Let's say if we were to push these stitches inward, this part is going to come out a bit, okay? So in reality, our stitches might look like this, okay? So when you talk about push-pull, this part here is your pull, and this part pushing out is your push, okay? So if you're going to get that push, you're going to want to design, you're going to want to digitize this a little bit back, okay? Now go a little bit back. So here, we pushed a little up on our on our needle penetrations, but here on the actual thread, we went a little back because it's gonna push in. All right. So let me know if that kind of makes sense. All right, with the push pull because it's kind of something. It's it's always something hard to explain and to look at because it's more it's more of something to anticipate. You have to anticipate the push and the pull because the software is not going to show you the push in the pool, okay? The only thing that tells you the push in the pool is the actual stitch out, okay? When something doesn't look right, most likely it was your push pool, all right? Uh, let me know if that kind of makes sense because uh, no matter what, okay, no matter what, push pool is always, it's like a moving target, okay? Because just when you think you, you understand it 100%, Okay, there's going to be certain designs that are going to make you have to adjust your push pull. All right. But if you kind of get the, the main idea, the main uh, the main uh, focus on uh, push pull, it'll it'll make sense if you ever have to fix something up. All right. So uh, that's for some reason. OK, I don't know why it is that happens on this part on the top and the bottom of the E, 
okay so so same thing here you can add this you can select your nodes that's why it's it's so important to have the least amount of nodes because then when you select them it's easy to all right so what you would do instead of uh forming your shape perfectly to the e bring it down a bit okay and then here select these two and then you can bring this up too all right so try that out when you're when you're doing your ease okay and i'll tell you usually if somebody's having issues with their um with their ease it, it's because of that sometimes you can even lose it or what happens is this e this portion h uh this portion it starts like moving or no actually it drops down a little okay common common thing that you're going to see on the letter e uh, when you see the final stitch out it looks like it's at an angle okay if that's happening okay the only way you could counter react that so whatever is happening you could counter it okay you can you could probably just as a quick fix all right bring it up a tad bit okay as a quick fix all right Bef All right, but those are common uh, common things that you'll see with the letter E. All right, something very so basic, everything so basic with the letter E, for some reason, uh, it becomes a problem. All right, let's talk about the, this small E, okay? The only thing with this letter E, usually uh, something that I'll see, uh, little issues that I'll see with the letter E, is just when you think you traced it perfect, what happens is, all right, so we're just trying to use the least amount of clicks. All right, what happens is sometimes you lose this 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 hole again, right? So we talked about losing the, the hole within the, the letter. Okay, so sometimes you just want to, it looks like it's going to be over-exaggerated, but sometimes push push this opening a little bit further in. Or further out okay so sometimes it might not look right on the software okay but uh, if you push it out a little bit more you'll avoid holes okay because if if you get it too close if this starts becoming too close to each other there's a very good chance that you're gonna tear a hole in this little hole okay so anytime you see little small uh, gaps, just open it up a little. Give yourself some space. All right, that's really the big thing to look out for for the letter E. All right, letter, letter F, same concept as E. Okay, so let's select. I could just right click it, copy. It's just kind of like copy and paste H. Let me delete this, delete. Bring this guy here. All right, so now it looks like the F, the, the E, right? All right, so it doesn't match up perfectly, but you can anticipate, okay, or push-pull. That's why it's a little bigger. All right, so E looks like F, okay? And then this part, this looks like the, the Facebook uh, F right here, okay? You could do this into three parts, okay? You can do the F into three parts. So you do this top part here. All right, bam, do this part and then do this quick rectangle. Okay, uh, this this part of the F, there's really nothing, there's nothing to look out for. Uh, I've never had problems with this F. Okay, uh, one thing I'll tell you about lowercase letters, avoid lowercase letters with small text okay because big text very straightforward but once you get into the smaller lowercase letters um you get more changes as in angles more moving pieces okay let me delete that one because i made too many changes on that one all right so if somebody insists okay somebody insists and we'll talk about small text in a bit okay if somebody insists because you shouldn't be going under five millimeters 
with your techs, okay? There's going to be times where a customer is going to say, hey, I need it to be at three millimeters, okay? Which it's possible. You can do it at three millimeters, all right? But there's going to be, uh, there's going to be, someone's going to take a hit, okay? Uh, so either the quality is going to take a hit or something's going to take a hit, all right? But if you do have to go very, very small, I would recommend just staying with uppercase letters, okay? It's uh, less headache than uh, lowercase. Lowercase, more moving pieces, more angle shifts, okay? All right, so our F here, very basic, okay? And then same thing, you would uh, select it all, I for branching, and then it's just deciding where do you want to start it, okay? Where do you want to start? So I would start here on the bottom bam, and end it here. Okay, so it looks pretty cool. Okay, this one's a little straightforward, nothing too crazy. All right, let's talk about, let's go here. Let's talk about some of the ones that can give you a headache. All right, let's talk about K. Okay, look at this letter K. All right, we have K is like uh, a busy intersection. All right, it's like a weird intersection with cars or thread going in all direction, okay? You have this guy right here that's going from up to down, then this guy that's going at this angle, this diagonal angle, and then this part going at a certain angle, okay? So let's talk about K, all right? Really, it's uh, it, once you got it, it's a little straightforward. Um, we'll just create this box here, okay? Okay, so this part's the easy part. On this one, okay, Okay, you just want to create this at this angle. You want it to come in at this angle. You want this angle to stay consistent. So we want to stay at this angle coming in. All right, but when you come in, remember we talked about merging like a freeway? All right, you want to merge in smoothly. All right, so here, bam. All right, so notice. We're going from left to right all the way down here, all right? So we we don't change our angle here. And as you can see, we're blending, okay? That's the goal right here is, all right? So when we talk about merging, we got that diagonal coming in like this with our long rectangle, okay? We want that merge, okay? So they just come in and they kind of blend in together. All right, so same concept down here with the K. All right, bam. And then you want to keep that angle the same. Push a little higher here. All right, bam. Then right this angle here up to here. All right, so keep that angle. Let's see, yep. From left to right all the way up in here. Okay. So K, K, K's, very interesting, these K's, just because they have three different objects coming in at different angles. So if we branch it, we could start it here. And, and it, uh, I would say up here, because you want this to be the last thing. All right. All right. Let's see if we got any questions coming on here. All right. Uh, all right. We got. Uh, Levite Apparel, hello, I'm new to the class, been watching your channel for a while, all right, thanks, good looking out, all right, uh, let's see, when is a good time to use the auto digitizing function, oh yeah, yeah, we answered that one, all right, uh, actually, uh, sometimes the only good thing about auto digitizing, it'll give you the colors, if you're looking for the, the if you're looking for a, a color match, you can use auto digitize and it'll match at least that, all right? At least it'll give you a, a color. All right. Uh, all right, what program am I using? All right. And then Brett answered that with Wilcom 4.5. Yep. Um, I'm trying to keep it very basic. I'm not trying to use the most craziest uh, tools that we have available here at 4.5, uh, Wilcom, all right? But uh, 
I try to just keep it so light. that way, whatever program you have, okay, uh, makes sense to you on whatever software you're using. Uh, all right, good question, all right? Because perfect time to answer this one. All right, Lejean, what are you using for settings, stitch, and underlay properties and stitch types you are using in this demonstration? Mine look like nothing's so yours, I would be like to correct my site. All right, cool, cool. Yes, perfect. Thank you for reminding me right now. All right, let's talk about settings, all right, because this is a make or break, all right, make or break type of information. All right, so let's start with here, all right, your auto spacing, always take that off, auto split, take that off, unless you're going to go with big designs, okay, keep the auto split, but if you're, if you, if you're, uh, if your satin stitches are less than seven millimeters, seven to nine, then you should be good, all right, we're, 3.77 okay so i always take out uh let me just do this for all of them auto split auto spacing okay auto spacing i hate it okay i hate auto spacing uh i know it's good there's certain times where it's good for text i don't like it because the what's happening is the, the software is kind of making some some judgment calls and sometimes they're not the most they're not the best judgment calls all right so whatever spacing i give it that's kind of like where i want to keep it at okay uh i think 0.38 for your overall text is usually good okay if you see gaps if you see gaps in your text you can either fix it two ways okay you can either add more um decrease your your spacing so maybe at a 35 or 33, okay? Something safe, don't go overboard, okay? Or if you're getting gaps, you can add more underlay. All right, now let's talk about underlay, okay? Underlay, I think that's the number one reason why somebody's text is not gonna look sharp, okay? Because either you're gonna put too much and what happens is if you put too much, especially, okay, this is the number one, reason that i think people get bad uh stitching is your edge run all right this edge run i think it's a uh it's a text killer okay because what happens is this edge starts sneaking out okay starts sneaking out now it looks like sausage okay your text looks like sausage now all right if you are going to use edge run i would recommend edge run once you start going with the bigger uh, bigger, more bold type fonts. Okay, if you're using something thin, especially something that's kind of uh, wavy, okay, stay away from edge run. All right. I what I like to do, I like to take away the underlay. I like to have center run. Uh, worst case scenario, if it is big, uh, pretty thin, um, I like to put zigzags. Okay, at the very minimum. Or if I do put an underlay. Okay, if you if you do have this option to do this, uh, if we put a uh, edge run, okay, let's see, this is my edge run here, okay? You see this, the closest one to the edge, that's my edge run. This middle one, that's my center run, okay? So if you do use an edge run, what I would recommend, if you have this option, okay, not too many people have this option, is increase the edge run just so it could get closer to the middle all right so i would say like a 0.8 okay now it got a little closer to the middle all right but if you keep it very close down low you're very close to the edge and once you get that push pull okay now your edge run is going to start showing all right but just to be safe i stay away from the edge run all right just in certain situations where my text is at a, as a specific thicker type font, okay? I think here, center run, maybe uh, maybe zigzag, okay, maybe. Or uh, adjust your uh, fill, your stitching, your spacing, 35 millimeters, okay? That's kind of like a safe zone there. So that's really with settings. I think that's that's the only settings uh and then one more your pull comp i would just say point this is your uh this is the default right this is what the this is what the software puts it at 0.17 
Okay, I would just go 0.22. Just give it a little extra umph. Okay, so maybe 0.17 or 0.25. Okay, just an extra, right? Extra, extra, like tiny. It's like uh, a chef that's just adding that little pinch of the salt. All right, that's all it is. You're not doing too much. Okay, but you're gonna see. You're gonna see which which. Uh, which settings works for you, okay? I think those are really the main settings there. Let's see, connectors, uh, yeah. Those are really the underlay, your your density, because it's spacing, that's the density, and then your pool comp, all right? I think those are your three, your, your three settings that, that you should uh, have as a default, all right? Uh, let's see. Uh, Somebody put. All right, do you, all right. Um, AT print. Do you do Chroma Lux tutorials? No, I don't have Chroma Lux. I have the most uh, basic Chroma. Uh, but I haven't got to it yet. Uh, all right. So we, yeah, of course. So every week we always have, we have uh, Chroma Lux. We have people with Chroma Lux and Brilliance, Wilcom, Hatch. Okay. Um, and other ones, all right. Uh, as long as you have the ability to do column A or any type of stitches, okay, a lot of stuff that we learn in this class can be applied to whatever software, okay, whatever software we have, all right. Uh, a lot of the bells and whistles from 4.5, I don't use, all right. Uh, it has a lot of more advanced stuff that it, uh, requires certain equipment also. Okay, but a lot of stuff that I do, I like to do corporate logos. Okay, uh, corporate logos and just regular um, basic designs. Okay, um, just require the most bare minimum type stuff. All right, so if, if whatever software you have, you should be all right. All right, so that was the letter K. Okay, uh, I think those were some real good questions. All right, it's always things that I have prepared. Okay, but sometimes I forget to uh, put out that information. All right. Uh, okay. Let's let's see this question. This is a pretty cool question. All right. What's the craziest program or better program than Wilcon? It feels like you had something in mind. Um. Uh. Yeah. There's there's other software that people like. You know they love 100. Uh, Pulse. Pulse is one. Um. There's other stuff out there that I, I'm kind of drawing a blank right now. But craziest, I don't know. I think four point. Uh, I think Wilcom is up there. All right, uh, at least top three. Okay, maybe top three. Okay, I uh, there's some people that love Pulse. Okay, Pulse is like a Tajima. It, it goes hand in hand with Tajima. All right, so there's other stuff out there. All right. Uh, let's see this one. Thoughts on PE design for digitizing? Okay. Uh, I don't know any information about the PE design. I do have uh, I do have the manuals for in Brilliance, uh, Chroma Lux. So I like to keep manuals just in case somebody asks me a question about a certain uh, software. That way I could reference that one because a lot of it is uh, is this same concept. It's just different language. Okay, so I think it's a good idea to have uh, to have the manuals. Actually, let's go ahead. Let's look at some of these manuals right here. I have some pulled up right here. All right. Oh, this is when I designed. I designed these shapes. I just did it on Canva. All right. Uh, here, right here. Okay. So I have a. Uh, I have bookmark. Okay. I have bookmark here. I have my hatch user guide. I have in brilliance user guide. Okay, so let's see. And brilliance here. All right. So good stuff, right? A lot of stuff that you see on the on the Wilcom, you see it here. Okay. A lot of stuff that you see in the hatch, you see it in all in the Wilcom. All right. It's just different language. All right. But something that I want to show you here on the Wilcom 4.5. All right. I'm pretty sure everybody has this too. Okay. Um Quick reference. Quick reference is always my favorite page 
on all manuals, okay? Because if you need a quick answer, okay, it has all of them. But this is what I want to show you right here, okay? Is this here, okay? It talks about the the fonts, embroidery fonts. Everybody has this page, all right? I know everybody has this page, no matter uh, which software you have, all right? Big thing, important thing to see here is recommended sizes. So whatever whatever um, font you choose to go with, all right, it's telling you what is the what is the minimum size, okay? So usually for these cool looking ones, okay, cool looking. Anytime you see a cool looking font, usually it's ten millimeters, okay. When you talk about box, the box type font, okay. Now you could go a little smaller, all right. For example, here, Avant Gardet, five millimeters. Okay, so if you're going into these uh, smaller type fonts, do not choose something such as Athletica or college, okay, font, okay, because now look at this, your minimum is 10 millimeters, it needs to be big, okay, so sometimes you have to, you have to, um, you have to inform the customer, okay, because the customer doesn't know what you can or can't do, okay, he thinks the sky's the limit, if you can print it, you should be able to uh, stitch it out, okay? But you have limits. So if, if they're asking for something to be done and it's not possible, tell them of uh, alternate solutions, okay? So if you want something Athletica at a five millimeter, you tell them, uh, no, we cannot do that, okay? We cannot do that, but I can go with block two, okay? But then even the blocks, okay? So this is the big one here, all right? So. This week, I'm telling you, I had a lot of questions on small small text, okay? There is a portion here that just tells you all the small text fonts, okay? So small text, you should easily be, be able to go to five millimeters, okay? I've, I've gone down to three millimeters, all right? That was my uh, kind of like my record of smallness of text okay so keep on going down okay so these are your small fonts right here okay so look for your small fonts stitch those out so you can see how it looks like okay but there's going to be times where you have to come in and add any of your um any of your uh um what do you call it your uh compensations okay Sometimes you have to make small settings to overcompensate for something that's not looking right. All right, so let's go back here, all right? Uh, actually, let's look at small alphabet. I do have the small alphabets here. Some things that I want to show you about small alphabets, okay? So these are your small alphabet text, okay? We should be able, so you go specials. We should be able to bring it down uh, right here height five millimeters so right here i have it as five millimeters all right this is kind of like the smallest you want to go to okay notice there's some adjustments that they make here okay there's some adjustments that they make here that is different than your regular font okay they don't what they don't do here on your small so you should kind of think about this if you're digitizing small letters okay they don't let me show you an example here they don't do that uh merging here Okay, so we're talking about like on a freeway. Um, let me break this apart, break apart. And let me break this apart again. Okay, so we talked about merging on the on the regular fonts. Here, they just make an object and then they know it's gonna connect when you stitch it out, okay? It's too small to overlap stitches, all right? So what you want here, you do not wanna overlap too many stitches so here this the leg the leg comes in it stops and then it has this part coming in okay so when it stitches okay it's so small that the possibility of you having a gap is very small okay so that you'll see that so here there's no merging between our uh stroke here and our stroke here okay they're just kind of connecting right at the end. So as you see here, small text, you want to avoid overlapping, 
okay? Because now it's so small that it's, it's gonna be obvious, all right? And then one thing is, like we talked about the underlay, this will make or break, okay? If you put a edge run, okay? This, all this stuff here, okay? All this edge run, it's gonna look like sausage, okay? It's gonna start spilling out of your, of your uh, text, okay? So definitely take this off, put center run. Sometimes when I go, so when I go three millimeters, which is, you know, the small, you can't go under three millimeters, all right? If you go that small or you're doing something crazy where you're going very small text, I've even taken off underlay. I just go straight stitch, okay? But that's all just stuff that you want to test with, okay? All right, let's see if we got some questions here. Uh, all right, Linda, I haven't gotten into the digitizing aspect, but that's why I'm here. I would like to learn it. Yes, like I said, right, in the beginning, in the opening show, is even though uh, you send out your designs, uh, you still have to learn how to how to how to create text because you're gonna get those orders, those customized orders where they only need names, and sometimes it doesn't make sense to send 24 names to a digitizer. Okay, sometimes if you understand the the concept of text, okay, you could just uh, use your keyboard, your keyboard uh, text. Okay, so whatever fonts you have on the software, okay, you could use those. You just have to know. When, what settings to use and when to override certain settings, okay? Because the software is going to be correct sometimes, okay? But sometimes it's not always going to be correct. Sometimes you have to override certain settings, all right? So those were some of the settings we talked about, okay? Um, all right, let's see. Uh, that's exactly what I needed to hear because it seemed like that like that was exporting because it was it's every I just couldn't figure out that okay cool 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 all right uh let's see how how I find a software to practice uh whatever whatever uh embroidery machine you have uh usually a uh, a company has the software that goes with that machine but there are some free software uh hatch I think has 30 day free. Uh, I'm not sure with Embrilliance if somebody wants to confirm if Embrilliance has a a, a free uh, trial version. I'm pretty sure they do. So uh, just research free uh, free uh, embroidery software. There's there's different ones, so you could play with different ones, whichever ones you like. Okay, just get that one. All right. Let's see. Uh, can I fe can I feature a snippet of the video so my subscribers can go to see? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You could uh, you could definitely do that. All right, I definitely wanna I, I definitely do want to do uh, some short videos on text, but sometimes text is just something that you can. Uh, it's probably you probably need like a twelve hour course to do the full text, right? Because right now today we're talking about block text, okay? But this is the fundamentals, okay? From here. Now you could venture on your own and start playing with different texts, okay? Um, but yeah, we do have block text. Then we have our uh, serif, okay? Block, uh, the ones with uh, like college type font, okay? Um, which kind of complicates stuff a tad bit, okay? Tad bit, all right. All right, let, let's continue here. I have some letters here that I definitely want to address, all right? Uh, the letter M, N. W, okay, those are my number one headache fonts. And I'll tell you why, okay? Because here, this little corner right here, all right? So here, this corner, I've seen that pretty much everybody digitizes these corners differently, okay? So these here, these caps, okay? So we have a lot of combination. You have a, you have, uh, object coming here, object coming here, here, here. And if you cap them, you have more, all right? But what I like to do, especially at this size here, I like to keep it very basic, okay? I'll do a, uh, so let me rewind that again. I'm using a column B stitch, 
Okay, if you have column B, it's very useful because you do one side, okay, push enter. It has this the left side locked in. Now I digitize the right side. Okay, but what I like to do, okay, pull it here. Now I extend my stitch up to here. Okay, so it looks like this. This is my first object. My first object looks like this. Okay, and then I do the same thing here. Column B, all right. You could check if your software has this column B. I think it's very useful. All right, but, oh, hold on. Start again. Start the left side. Bam, got that side. Then you get this side here. Extend it. All right, T. Bam, bam. And then you can mirror these. Okay. Um, actually, I'll just stitch it out right here. All right. So we're going to do one side at a time. So that's what column B is. All right. Uh, if you don't have column B, all right, it's not the end of the world. You just got to create the stitch to, to make it look like that. All right. But yeah, these letters. All right, and then make this last bar here. And this is one where you definitely want to, uh, you definitely want to branch just because you have so many moving pieces here. Okay, see? Okay, so it looks like this. All right. Um, let's see, on this one here, this is block two. Okay, just as a reference, just want to show you how they do it. Okay, so let's break this part. Control K and Control K one more time. Okay, so here, this is where they use the caps. Okay, so they cap there. This is one letter I would advise to practice, 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 because there's there's different ways to make this um, to make the M. Okay, there's this way. Okay, and then let me go, let me put it back together. Let me show you a different font. Okay. Uh, let me show you this font right here. And then specials, avant-garde. Actually, let's go to um, Helvetica. Okay. One of the world's most famous fonts, Helvetica. Okay, here, let's break this apart. Okay. Okay. Notice that they're merging. Now they don't have that cap, right? They don't have that big block on the top. Okay. This is for a more thinner type font, right? So now they have it merging. All right. So they have these two merged together. Okay. So you can do it like that too. All right. So there's really three ways to do it. I think there's three ways to do it. There's probably more. All right. So there's the cap, the one where you put the cap, you put these two where they're merging. Or the way I'm doing it right here, where I'm just making it one solid, okay, one solid object, okay. And then, of course, you want to make sure that you put your underlays correct. So underlays, I would put a center run. Uh, you could, yeah, center run. Center run's fine. And then branch it. Start here, end it here, okay. Now let's take a look at it. Let's see when it uh, hide others. Okay, so you just lay this off, this first underlay, just to make sure you lock in the whole letter together. All right, and now it does the stitching here. Let's speed it up a bit. All right. All right, so very good, this one, right? I like it, it's very efficient. Okay, but you saw there's uh, other ways to do it. All right, let's see. Uh, uh, 
Let's see. All right. Some good stuff. All right. Good information on the chat. All right. Let's see. Will you be going over digitizing for caps at some point? Yes. 3D puff. Okay. 3D puff. I just, uh, we're going, we're getting there. Okay. We are getting there. We are slowly getting there. I just, when we get to digitizing 3D puff, I don't just want to um, all of a sudden uh, introduce information that you never heard of. All right. So I want to make sure we're taking care of the, we're, we're taking care of the basic stuff here. Okay. So the goal, the goal is for, we're going to use this information that we use today. Okay. And we're going to create uh, next week. Okay. Next week, we're going to dive deep. We're going to talk about patches. Okay. So we're going to digitize some patches. And since we kind of went over uh, the basics of lettering, okay, uh, we can easily dive deep and go quickly into the into the digitizing portion of it, and then from there we can easily transition now to the to the three D puff and the more advanced stuff. All right, so good, good question. Appreciate the question. All right, uh, M. Okay, so that that's the letter M. Letter N, very similar. Okay, same same concept there. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, thank you. Wonder what column B would be called in Chroma Lux. All right, good question. Uh, I would say just look at the type of stitches that you have, and so if, in, in in my situation, I have column A, column B, column C together. So wherever you have this stitch, your column A stitch, just look around. It should you should have your other stitches if you have it available. All right, good question. All right, Beverly Atkins, great information. Thank you, appreciate that. Okay, of course. Okay, Robin, yay patches. All right, patches is always one of the most uh, popular item that always gets asked for uh, from from customers, all right? So always good to know um, patches, all right? All right, so let's let's kind of go over some of these uh, letters here. Let me just talk about this M, okay? This M, this lowercase M, one cool thing about this, okay? This one is a uh, fairly straightforward, Okay, we got our line here. Okay, now this is where we use that concept where like the the freeway concept. Okay, we nice and easy. We merge into it and then we create our M here. Okay, so the shoulder, these are called shoulders. This part of the M is called the shoulder. Okay, now the cool thing about this guy here, you could just copy and paste, copy this one, bring it over here, okay, and it should match, okay? If it doesn't, we can easily adjust that. So you want it to match here, bam, bam. All right, that's cool. Uh, H, if they don't match, just grab your nodes, okay? Since we didn't use so many nodes, it's very easy to adjust. Okay, just pull it back, bam. We're good. All right, looks good. All right, now this is another one where you want to branch it. Okay, I start here, bam, end it here. All right, so looking nice and clean. All right, so this M, very straightforward. All right, so the M and the N, they're like uh, brothers, right? This M looks like the N. Uh, the O. O, very fun one. This is the most easiest one to do sometimes. Okay. Uh, something to look out for. I'll tell you something to look out for. All right. But click, click. This is one where it was similar to that C, where we talked about the C, how the C likes to uh, push and pull a lot. Okay. Bam, bam. All right, let's get to it right here. 
All right, let's just click right here. Let me tell you some cool stuff about this O right here. All right, you could, of course, you could fix it here. H. Put a little roundness here. All right. Uh, one thing about this O, okay, this is one that really stands out when you mess it up, okay? Because what happens is this O, you trace it perfectly, and then when it stitches out, it looks like it's shrunk, okay? So this is one where you want to increase the height, okay? So if you push Control, it kind of does both top and bottom. So what I would recommend is make it a little taller than what it is. Increase the height than what it is. Because this is one where people just, uh, where you stitch it out and then you wonder why did my O, why does my O look smaller than the other one? And it stands out when the O gets a little smaller, you could tell from like a mile away. All right, so look out for that letter O. All right, let's see. Uh, Barb, for all the new people, I suggest go back and take a look at what week one, two, three. As there are downloadable files to check out. Yep, yep. Thanks. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, the goal is to uh, have that foundation. So this is the fourth one. This is the fourth episode. Okay. We're building a strong foundation. Okay. Our foundation, especially with the uh, uh, logos, real basic type logos, block lettering. Okay. So as we're getting into our second month, all right, it, it's kind of crazy that right we're already uh almost completed with our first month of january all right time is flying by real quick okay but once we get into february we're gonna start picking up the pace a little okay we're gonna start adding some more stuff we're gonna start getting into the advanced stuff okay that way once we get into the advanced stuff if anybody is struggling and not keeping up then it would be a good idea to go back and start with some of the basics all right um Let's see. Uh, can how much do you practice digitizing? Uh, so I do a lot of uh, I do a lot of digitizing for uh, like Navy, uh, U.S. Navy type uh, designs, and there are thousands and thousands of different designs, which I would never be able to complete all of them, right? But I do have to do a, a bunch of designs, so. A lot of my practicing comes from there, from just knocking out a lot, a lot of different types of uh, different commands and different types of artwork for U.S. Navy. OK, so uh, that is my practicing. So I'm practicing as I'm going. OK, anytime you do a new logo or anytime you do a new project, no project is ever the same. So you're always practicing. OK, if you're working, you're practicing. OK. That's how it is. So every time you pick up a new project, you're just practicing. So definitely uh, the day consists of uh, knocking out designs. So yes, constantly practice, practice, practicing. All right. All right. Let me see. Uh, Janice, that's an awesome tip for digitizing an O. Yep. All right. Because you already know that O, it likes to shrink. All right. Uh, Lydia, I'll have to rewatch the class start from the beginning, but I won't remember all this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, me, I, I have a binder of all my digitizing notes. All right. Believe it or not, sometimes I have to reference a lot of my stuff. Okay. Because me, if I don't, if I don't use a, a certain piece of information for like two, three months, I kind of forget about it or I kind of don't remember. So I, I, uh, reference a lot of stuff. This is just like a small guide. One of many notebooks that I have here. All right. It just has fonts. Okay. It has different fonts. And how the software recommends digitizing it. Okay. Just a bunch of notes. All right. And then this one here, this is like my cheat sheet here. Okay. I got to scan it and make it available to you guys. So you could see what I use, but let me see if you could see it. This is kind of like the picture that I posted. These are all the different, a lot of the similar fonts. So a lot of times uh, you might not know why. You might not know what's the difference between a font, okay? Because sometimes it's kind of, it's hard to tell um, 
what makes block one, block two different, what makes the Helvetica and the Futura different, okay? So sometimes I'm, I'm wondering, uh, and there's so many other fonts, right, that look similar, but it's like, well, what makes them different, okay? So I like to compare, contrast different fonts, all right, especially uh, new fonts that I haven't heard about or uh, new fonts that just came out on the market. All right, I like to uh, analyze that stuff. So I would recommend have a uh, have a notebook and just date it. Make sure you, you date it and then title it. All right, all right, cool, cool. All right, let's see uh, any other letters here. I know we're going into uh hour and 50 minutes, okay? Uh, I think it was some real good training. I, I did want to uh, go through all the letters, okay? But a lot of these letters, like the M, okay? The M looks a whole lot like the letter N, all right? With a couple exceptions, all right? But this top part looks very similar. Same way this N, okay? The N looks like the M. Okay, just with little minor adjustments. Okay, but there are some letters that I do want to talk about. Um, let's see. Okay, because the letter U, right? You can't get more basic than that. Okay, uh, the V looks like kind of like the M. Okay, so the M, V, W, those are all like in the same family, in the same category. But let's talk about this letter S. Okay, letter S, one of my favorite letters. Okay, I'm telling you, the, the more you digitize letters, the more you'll start getting uh, favorite letters, all right, and then letters that you hate. Okay, let me just show you something cool about this. Uh, letter S, okay, it looks like it's a full curve, okay, it looks like it's a full curve. But here, so the spine of the S, this is called the spine of the S, it actually goes straight, all right, so when you're digitizing, you could just make this portion here, this it's like a rec rectangle, okay? Then you go back, then you go back to creating the curve, all right? Um, and then this is another one that likes to shrink. This letter likes to shrink. So kind of be aware of these letters that like to shrink on you, okay? It's all the push-pull. But anytime you see that, that letter shrinking, you could kind of pick it up a bit, all right? So these are the letters, okay? Uh, the letter T, all right? This is like the letter E where we talked about where uh, this bar, for some reason, it likes to get small, right? Because you could see now that we know push-pull, you kind of know why certain parts of your letters tend to get small. Okay, so this is another one where you want to make this a little bigger, okay? So good stuff. Um, what I want to do, okay, what I want to do today, okay, I'm going to uh, finish digitizing this one. I'm going to make show notes, okay? I think we had some good show, uh, some, some good information that we had here with the question. A combination of the questions and stuff that we talked about, I want to make just everything, put it down on one sheet of paper. So that way, okay, um, that way you could print it out and kind of see everything in one sheet. Okay, so that's going to be my goal for today. Uh, my goal is to do it today, post it tomorrow. So come by tomorrow, all right, on the description, and hopefully I could have it ready for you uh, for download, all right? I'll have a Google link. I'll put all the notes. So I did gather uh, different notes for today's show. Okay, so like this one, I'll put this one. Let me see this one. Yeah, like a little cool drawing that I made here. All right, I'll put it so you could so you could have a good uh, a good copy of that one. All right, uh, I'll add some of that push pull information, some of that underlay information. Okay, uh, if there's anything that you want to see me to add, let me know. All right, but uh, let's go. Let's take care of some of these questions real quick. All right. Let's go. We got about 10 minutes to do questions. All right. Um, let me see. Where do I start? Uh, bam, bam. 
if you got any questions, just let me know right now. Um, hold on. All right, Gino Riggs, I would suggest Inkscape Ink Stitch Extension. All right, cool. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll check that out today, see what that is. Uh, Chroma has a free trial. All right, there you go. All right, a lot of the big uh, software companies, they all have free trials. All right, so try that out. So yes, Bevy Jean, thank you for confirming that. And Brilliance has free trial software too. Cool. Uh, Let's see, William. An embroidery store told me thirty dollars to digitize. I'm not sure if that's high or low. Yeah, that's that's twenty dollars is like common. Thirty, right? If they're real good, all right. Um, I know some people pay five dollars. All right, there are five dollars digitizers out there, so you could find all range. All right. Uh, bam, bam. Uh, yeah, this is a good comment right here from Barb. William, to me, $30 is not unreasonable. I would pass that cost to my customer. That's the big thing, right? You pass that, that cost to the customer. Anytime I send out, if I send out um, digitizing, okay, um, there's some times where it, it doesn't make sense to, if you're like on a, on, a, on a tight timeline, sometimes it makes more sense to send your stuff out, right? And if you do, Okay, you have two options. You could either charge the customer. Okay, if I'm doing a big a big project, that thirty dollars is not even uh, it's nothing. Okay, you could you could just add it into the into the total thing, not even mention anything about charging a digitizing fee. All right, but if it's something smaller, okay, if it's a smaller project, all right, you could definitely uh, pass it and charge the customer for that digitizing fee. Definitely. All right. Uh, Evelyn, I don't want to get off subject, but what is your take on auto digitize true type font and will come? Uh, no, not always. I just like to bring in the design and digitize because sometimes you're 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 editing, you're doing more, you're spending more time editing uh, nodes, and then when you auto digitize, it gives you a thousand nodes, so it's not easily you're not easily able to uh, to uh, edit, okay? So I don't like it, but uh, sometimes it might work. Sometimes you get like, there's certain fonts that for some reason they work good, okay? But then there's other, so it's it's like a 50-50 chance. So just try it out. If it looks good, if you think it looks good, if the sample stitch out good, then you're good, all right? But, very, but once you know how to digitize letters, then you're not even worried about auto-digitizing. All right. Um, all right. Good, Evelyn. I don't use auto digitize at all, as it takes more time. Yup, exactly what I just said. Right. Exactly. You take more time fixing that stuff that you could have just done like ten clicks and got those letters. All right. So good. Good. Good comment there. Oh, uh, bam, bam. Yeah, bam, bam. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good one right here. All right, VL, will you review how to fix adjust current designs? I don't know what to look for. I have a design that puckers in the same place for every stitch. Yes, very good, right? Uh, always good to know, especially if you send out to a digitizer, okay? Uh, even if you have the best digitizer in the world, okay, there may be times where he kind of forgets to do something, all right? And then you got to check out what happened in certain locations, okay? Always good to uh, run run uh your your design on your software and make sure uh everything is everything checks out good all right the cuts your all your um overlays and all that stuff is good all right so good stuff yeah we'll definitely talk about that uh, uh maybe I'll, I'll look for a a design or i'll purposely design something that's so messed up and go back and fix it all right all right all right all right, so bar, I keep a notebook on digitizing. I also have a form, also have a form for each customer that I can write on any digitizing. Yep, perfect right there, all right? Thank you for bringing that up. So every customer, uh, every design has a sheet. You should print out the sheet 
right? For example, here, let's say this sheet, right? Um, on this on this page, uh, let's say this was my design, right? Going to a customer. What you want to do, okay? You go to print preview, okay? And you could print out a job sheet, right? So you go to options, uh, put what do you want on it? So the info, okay? Let's just say full, okay? So this is how a job sheet should look, right? You have all the information, all the customer information on it. You put notes, all this open space or on the backside, or you staple uh, any notes, any conversations that you had with the customer, okay? Um, you could put all that stuff on this, all right? So good stuff, yeah, definitely that. All right, all right, let's see. Um, and then Levi Apparel, are you in the service? Yes, I'm in the US Navy. Okay, all right, let's see. Uh, William Stewart, sounds like you're gonna cut my short, my lesson short and skip letters. Uh, well, we're two hours in. All right, we're two hours in. I could definitely uh, continue going. Okay, a lot of it is just repetition. All right, a lot of it is just repetition. Uh, I think we have enough information. Okay, I think we have enough information for you to uh, get get whatever fonts text you're looking for and uh, practice. All right, so definitely uh, good stuff, but. I'm not going to end it there. I'm going to continue doing it, and then I'm going to put show notes. All right, just give me a day or two, give you show notes, and then I'll put uh, a lot of stuff that we learned about. All right, but I don't want to go three hours. All right, I don't want to go three hours. Um, but yeah, good comment right there. All right, Robin, appreciate that. Thank you for another good informative class. All right, William, appreciate that. Uh, Linda, all right. I want to thank everybody. All right. Uh, I think we did some good training. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for all the work you put in class. You have a lot to learn uh, yet, but you have taught me some. I have a lot to learn, but yet you have taught me so much. Yep, we have enough. Uh, I think we we all as a group, okay, we have enough of a good foundation, right? Especially this, this is week four, okay? We at least have that foundation to go and start uh, practicing on uh, not only on text, but on some of your most famous, um, on some of your most popular fonts or uh, popular logos. Okay. So like I said in the previous show, in the last weeks, I said, whatever niche you're in, so whatever industry you're in, look for the top dogs. Look for the top dog logos, recreate those logos to the point where it's nearly, nearly flawless, perfect. Okay. Because the day's going to come when they're going to call you and you're already going to be ready. Okay, you're already going to have all their stuff ready because you were preparing. All right? So I think we're very good right now. Um and Sanders, appreciate that. Thank you. This class very helpful. We started our business last year. We have the 10 needle Ricoma. Yep. All right. Alicia, good morning. Hey everyone. All right. Um I was just joking. Thanks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I already know. I already know. I got you. All right, uh, Shayna, thank you for spending your Saturday morning with us. Yep, appreciate that, everybody. All right, and then, yep, thank you. Barb, thank you like always. All right, all right, so next week, all right, let me give you a rundown for next week, all right, because we got, we're just getting, it's just getting better and better every week. All right, let's see, bam. All right, for next week, we are going all right, we are going to dive deep into patches. All right, we're going to dive deep into patches. Now that we talked about the, the text portion, now I could kind of move uh, fairly fast, okay, when we're dealing with that. All right, so I'm going to go design, uh, start designing some very cool patches. If you have any uh, suggestions of what you want to see, what type of patches you want to see, uh, drop them in the comments, okay? I always go back. I look at all the comments. And... Um, this week, I'm going to do, uh, I'm just going to have a uh, a notepad and write down all questions that are coming in, okay? I'm going to log them in, and that way, when it comes for Saturday, okay, we're taking care of all these questions, all right? But, okay, I feel like our first four episodes is kind of leading us into this next week, which is patches, okay? One of the most uh, uh, funnest, best part about embroidery is patches, 
Okay, it's never going to get out of style. And every industry that you get into loves patches. All right. So with that being said, leave all your questions. Okay, leave all your questions in the in here in the in the comments. All right, I'll make sure later on. I'm gonna start taking down all the questions. Okay, later today, uh, today tomorrow, today slash tomorrow. Look out for the descriptions because I'm gonna put the show notes. All right, everything that we learned today, I'm gonna make a document so we could kind of have it all as a reference. All right, and with that being said, I want to thank everybody for stopping by, hanging out with me today. All right, it means a lot. All right, and our our weekly show is only going to get better and better and better and better. All right, with that being said, peace. See you next week.